everybody. Today we're going to be reading Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the Sky by Faith Ringold. So we've talked about Harriet Tubman before. We've watched a few little videos about what she did for the slave trade in the time of the Civil War and getting slaves freed. So we're going to learn a little bit more about that today in this fabulous book. So let's begin. So this is Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the Sky, again, by Faith Ringold. And she wrote a note for us to read. Dear children, Susie Shannon, my great-great-grandmother, was born into slavery. I wish I could have known her and talked with her. Through the years, Susie Shannon has become a hero to me because she survived very difficult times so that I could be free. This book is my way of talking to Susie and at the same time talking to you. Faith Ringold. Aunt Harriet's Underground Railroad in the Sky. One day, my baby brother BB and I were flying among the stars, way, way up. So far up the mountains looked like pieces of rock candy and the oceans like tiny cups of tea. We came across an old ramshackle train in the sky. A tiny woman in a conductor's uniform appeared on the steps of the train and announced the schedule. All aboard, all aboard, Maryland, Delaware, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Niagara Falls, Canada. All aboard, all aboard. Hundreds of beraggled men, women, and children filled the skies and boarded the dusty old wooden train. No one spoke. It was like watching a silent movie. Come on, Cassie, B.B. said, jumping on the train. Let's take a ride. Go free north or die. Get off that train, BB. I'll tell mommy and daddy and you'll be in a world of trouble, I yelled. But the train quickly moved off through the sky and disappeared. All I could see now were flashing lights, sending a threatening message through a sea of clouds. Go free north or die. Go free north or die. Go free north or die. Bebe, come back. Mommy and Daddy will never forgive me for letting you go, I screamed. Then the woman conductor's voice came like a soft whisper in my ear. Hello, Cassie. I am Harriet Tubman. People call me Aunt Harriet because I take care of them. During slavery, I carried hundreds of men, women, and children to freedom on the Underground Railroad and never lost a passenger. Let me tell you about slavery, Cassie, Aunt Harriet said. We were brought here from Africa as slaves to work long hours on plantations for no pay. More of us died on the ships coming over than ever reached these shores. If we tried to escape and were caught, we might have a foot cut off or get sold away from our families. And then we never saw our family or friends again. So these signs say, Sales by auction, men, women, and children. Reward, $40,000, Harriet Tubman, dead or alive. A legal or church marriage was not allowed, so instead a man and a woman would jump the broom. It was against the law for a slave to learn to read or write. So you guys might not like school, but way back when, slaves couldn't learn to read or write or have a meeting, even to preach the word of God. Every 100 years, that old train will follow the same route I traveled on the Underground Railroad so that we will never forget the cost of freedom. Sometimes the train is a farmer's wagon. Sometimes it is a hearse covered with flowers. Inside, a live slave hides in a coffin. You miss this train, Cassie, but you can follow always one step behind. When we reach freedom in Canada, you will be reunited with Bibi. Cassie, though you can fly, being a slave will suck you to the ground like quicksand. You will have to walk many miles through the woods and waters on blistered feet, and there will be bounty hunters eager to collect the reward on your head. Follow the North Star. In daylight, look for moss growing on the side of the tree that faces north. Along the way, there will be underground railroad agents to give you a place to stay, clean clothes, and food. But until you reach Canada, you are not safe. 
Go and don't turn back. And remember, if you are caught, you will be severely punished. First, you must escape from the slave plantation. Tell no one. Wait until night falls so that you will not be seen. Then, follow the trail through the woods to a gray farmhouse on the river. Your first night will be the hardest. Listen carefully to the song of the birds. When you are in danger, their song will become screams that only you can hear. Then, you must stop and head in the opposite direction. When you lie down to rest, you will hear me sing the old spiritual. Go down, Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. Let me lullaby you to sleep. When I stop singing and you hear the birds scream, wake up and move on. I reached the gray farmhouse on the river. I slept in the farmer's attic. It was dark and scary. Cobweb cobwebs hung from the ceiling like gray ghosts, but the farmer and his wife were very kind. There was a note under the pillow. Dear Cassie, I am very frightened, but I am a big boy and I will not turn back. Love, BB. Then Aunt Harriet's voice came like a gust of wind. Follow the river north until you reach a clapboard house with green shutters and a red brick chimney. There will be a blind railroad agent who will ask you to sing a song. You will sing, Go down Moses, way down in Egypt land. Tell old Pharaoh, let my people go. She will give you food and a place to sleep. By nightfall, you must be on your way through the woods. I found Bibi's baseball cap floating in the swamp. It was worn to shreds. I squeezed the mud out of it. Leave the cap, Cassie, Aunt Harriet whispering Aunt Harriet's whispering voice said. Go on to a weather beaten frame house with a star quilt flung on the roof. If you don't see the quilt, hide in the woods until it appears. Then it is safe to go in. The next night, follow the road to the bridge, several miles away. I traveled through the woods and swamps. I was cold, wet, and very hungry, but I could not turn back. When I reached the bridge, I hid in a graveyard on a hill overlooking the river. It was there I found BB's toy soldiers and a set of his baseball ca cards buried among the grave of a boy BB's age. I was too afraid to cry. I lay awake till I heard Aunt Harriet's familiar whisper. Wait for a railroad agent disguised as a grave digger. He will say, I bring you a ticket for the railroad. Now the tears came streaming down my face like rain. I would see BB soon, soon, soon. In a tiny yellow house on the edge of the city, a little girl my age gave me a ticket for the steam car and sewed a fake pass to freedom she had made on my undershirt. It read, Cassie Louise Lightfoot, freeborn in New York. Show that to anyone who tries to take you back to the slave's plantation, she said. I reached the back door of a shoemaker's house and knocked three times. That time I slept in a secret room behind a bookcase. BB had been there and left another note. Dear Cassie, I have a new babysitter. She was born, I have a new baby sister. She was born today. Her name is Freedom. Her mother got sick and went to heaven. She let me carry baby Freedom on my back. Love, BB. After a few days rest, I started out again with new shoes the shoemaker made me. Move on, Cassie, Aunt Harriet's voice told me. You are very close to the border of the free state of Pennsylvania. Look for the letter P written on a rock facing north. But still beware of bounty hunters. They can kidnap you at any time. Until you reach Canada, you are not safe. In New York, a bookbinder hid me in a secret compartment he had built into his wagon. In a downpour of rain, he delivered me to a funeral parlor. There was a funeral going on, so no one noticed me. The undertaker gave me a withered rose B.B. had left, pressed in a book with a note. Dear Cassie, we stayed at the house of a millionaire. He gave Aunt Harriet a bunch of money. We will never be hungry again. Love, B.B. The undertaker gave me a fresh cut rose, hid me in a coffin in his hearse, and took me to Niagara Falls. Now I was just over the bridge from Canada. Niagara Falls looked like a giant tea party with a billion cups of steaming hot tea being poured to a resounding applause. The steam from the falls formed a soft blanket that lifted me up, up, up above the falls and across the bridge to Canada. I could fly. I was free. 
I could see Aunt Harriet and Beebe, with Baby Freedom still tied to his back, the passengers on the Underground Railroad, and women all dressed in white, flying in a huge circle around them. We're free! We have shook the lion's paw, Aunt Harriet yelled in a voice that shot through the air like a joyous bolt of lightning. Go down, Moses, Beebe said, and let my people go, the others sang out. I kissed Beebe over and over and over, and I made him promise he'd never, ever leave me again. I love you, Cassie, but I had to go, Beebe said. Freedom is more important than just staying together. And what's more, I got to ride on the Underground Railroad with Harriet Tubman. Now I know what our great-great-grandparents survived when we were children. That day, there was a big feast, and a quilt celebrating the 100th anniversary of Harriet Tubman's first flight to freedom hung in the sky. People came to eat, dance, and sing praise to Aunt Harriet for taking us from slavery to freedom and for being the Moses of her people. So Aunt ha Harriet Tubman was born a slave in about 1820 in Bucktown, Maryland. Her father taught her to hunt, swim, imitate bird calls, and survive in the woods. Her mother taught her nursing skills and how to use her herbs for medicine. Though Harriet could not read or write, with these survival skills, she escorted over 300 slaves to freedom on 19 trips on the Underground Railroad without ever losing a passenger. Among them were her aged mother and father and all her brothers and sisters. The Underground Railroad was a network of people in hiding places. The first accounts of slaves escaping on the Underground Railroad date, back, date from as far back as 1787. Harriet Tubman's own escape north was made in 1849 with the help of a Quaker woman who she encountered on the road near the plantation fields. The woman directed Harriet to a house of a German farmer and his wife. With their assistance and that of many other conductors, Harriet reached freedom in Canada. She returned to become a conductor herself, guiding groups of slaves north through Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and New York to Canada, where the government refused to return former slaves to their American masters. She traveled mainly at night, sang songs as signals to other people, and carried a pistol to defend herself. Slave traders placed bounties ranging from $10,000 to $40,000 on Harriet's head. There's lots of other fun facts about Harriet Tubman, but I'm going to show you this map before we go, and then I'm going to let you learn about what we're going to write about today. So she went from these southern states up through here, so this is Illinois here, and we're right here in central Illinois, but we went around Illinois, sometimes to Chicago, sometimes to Mis Michigan, sometimes Wisconsin, sometimes to Minnesota, and they are going up through here into Canada. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I hope you guys loved our book. So now you're going to think about what this book meant to you, and then you're going to write about three sentences, at least three sentences. So if you're really interested in this, you can write even more than that. Um, and you're gonna write three sentences about what you think freedom is. Then you're gonna compare the world now to the world back during the time of the slaves and Harriet Tubman. Then you're gonna talk about what you can do with your freedom today that maybe they couldn't do back then. And you're gonna make sure you use capital letters and punctuation. I can't wait to read your writing and let me know if you liked the story or not. See you later.